We're about to do a boatload of pruning. We got over 200 fruiting plants. I'm gonna show you three different tools that we use for pruning, and I'm gonna show you how we sharpen them. There's different ways to sharpen these tools. I'm gonna to show you how we do it to maintain these fruiting plants. Tool number one is this hand job right here. This is by Corona, and I bought Corona. They're gonna be a little more expensive, but they're gonna last for a long, long time. Ford Steel Corona hand pruning tool. Loppers. These loppers are by Friskers. These loppers are about 100 years old. I even broke the handle and then put a little, like a stub inside there and got that handle back together. I use this to cut fat, bamboo bamboo is a really hard wood this sucker goes through that but you want to make sure the blades are sharp otherwise you're going to risk breaking the handle i believe friskers has a lifetime warranty double check on that i love these friskers the third tool we use is the tree saw this is by corona also i use this very sparingly because i will not be sharpening all these little blades that's just too much work if you want a tree saw to last just make sure you don't cut something other than uh like a tree branch if it hits soil or if it hits any sort of hard surface you're going to start dulling these blades otherwise this will last five plus years and saw really really good you know another tool i use that i don't have with me is a cordless sawzall the problem with the cordless saw is the reciprocating blade is a little brutal so i don't use that on one of our fruiting trees i will use that on our native trees that are all around us the cordless sawzall is another fantastic pruning tool I've already worked on this one, but the key is to make sure that you sharpen this blade and then once you're done with it, kind of go to the backside and get any rough steel off. If you want to be really thorough, you take that bolt off and that way you have this whole blade all to itself and you can get in there really good with a file. You're going to want a little file like this. I bought this file for absolutely next to nothing. Don't get a cheap brand. This brand was obviously Ford steel. Get yourself over a really good surface like this and just get in there and give that edge a rub. Do I need to stroke it only this way or only that way or only this way? I don't bother with all that. What I do know is once I do this method, this sucker will cut really, really good. Get in there, give it a little bit of an angle, right? You do wanna follow the existing uh, bevel on that blade give it a good rub don't be cheap there's a coarse side and a fine side on this so I start off with the coarse side come back with the fine side and then flip it over you want to file down any sort of funky steel that came up on the back side get it nice and flat this is like a hundred year old blade. I'm exaggerating to make the point, but if you take a look, this blade looks, this edge looks really, really good. I keep it filed down. From time to time, there'll be some pretty gnarly indents and whatnot on that blade. That's why you need to keep this blade sharp. I use the same process as with the hand tool. I'm sort of doing a circular motion. Flip it around. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of different ways to sharpen these tools. That's the method we use to maintain our 200 plus fruiting trees. Love you.